G'day guys, welcome back to the lab. So, a couple of months ago we had the skid factory here. Uh, Al and Woody, they come along and we were talking about stuff and things, looking at the ute and the Gloria and the March, etc. And Woody said, what about the Bedford? Are we going to talk about that? And there was a grumbly, muttery response from myself. And we did. We did actually talk about the Bedford. And we did film it just quickly just had a look at a couple of things and the dogs barked as they do and we went inside and we had a look at everything else poor old Betty never made it into the video it might have been because it was boring it might have been because it was untidy it might have been because the dogs barked or it might have been because they simply ran out of time in the video but a couple of people and I'm not using the term a couple, meaning dozens, and I've abbreviated it. Like, two people have asked about the Bedford. So, it has sat here uh, for a very, very long time. Last time it was registered on the road, running on the road, was five years ago. Or close to, you know, four years ago. That's And that's a, a registration, sort of, so like... Or restoration type stuff so we do have some plans for it it's just a case of getting on to it and of course being one of our vehicles it's it's not standard so hiding under there that's a Holden 253 which is probably one of the worst V8s in the world it's got the power of a four-cylinder and the fuel consumption of a V8 but it sounds good and it's enough for this thing you know it's got a holly carburetor on there, so it helps it make a bit more power. It's also running extractors um, and a couple of Kobe mufflers and basically a straight through exhaust system. So it goes okay, it's got a three speed, I don't know where it's come from, holding gearbox out of god knows what, automatic. It's got a Nissan Navara D21 brake master cylinder on there because the Bedford one died and it couldn't be rebuilt it was beyond recovery we couldn't be bothered stuffing around with second handy stuff so that's been retrofitted works really really well and to complement that we've got 13 inch two-piece z1 motorsports z32 front rotors that have been customized with a custom hat from zanoli to fit in behind the spacer to adapt to oh, I think that's six by one four seven point five or something is that the pattern something like that and of course the obligatory Z32 four pot calipers so now we can run 17 inch tires wheels and they're nice and flush with the with the custom steel flares that are on there flush they poke just a tiny little bit that's right and so the rears we haven't done anything with the rear brakes at this point in time. It's just um, just adapters onto the standard tiny tiny little wee drums in there you can see the bloody adapters are just about as big as the brakes so yeah she's in pretty poor state um, a few years ago it was it was looking lovely you imagine that color all polished up and looking beautiful Montego blue it's a Chrysler color it's um, it looked really good but it's been just neglected a little bit so not much to see on the inside did have did have a console up here that's been removed for a bit of a tidy up and as you can see she's a complete disaster in here it's a bit of a part storage container at the moment but we do crash I gotta say we do have plans upstairs I've got a custom intake manifold to go onto there and a Holden 304 throttle body and some ejectors and some fuel rails and all that we're going to put fuel injection in there already I hear the screaming from the internet why would you want a fuel injector Holden 253 what was the point in that why don't you put an LS in there why don't you put a, a Holden 304 and why don't you put a Barra and a Barra turbo in there why don't you uh, VK56, VK45DE, a VQ35 with a turbo. 
There's, um, I mean, Christ, even a, a YD25 out of a Navara, the diesel motor would go better than the Holden 253 V8 with the fuel injection. And it'd be cheaper to run. Wouldn't actually be a bad conversion, except it's probably, the motor might be a bit tall, maybe. So, it's a really long story. The, um, the Bedford wasn't supposed to be a family heirloom. What happened was, Bill, Granddad Bill, his house got broken into. The family heirloom watch that was supposed to be handed down through the generations got stolen, and my wife's brother Robert was given the option of having the Bedford instead. And he said, Hell yeah! So he took the Bedford. Um, Granddad Bill had organised converting it into a camper van and putting the Holden 253 and everything into it. And then Robert, who would have been my brother in law, he got the engine rebuilt and the gearbox rebuilt and did a whole heap of work on it and unfortunately um, sadly for all involved Robert got cancer and passed away so it was one of the promises on his deathbed that my wife would get the Bedford done up and get it looking nice so and we did when we used it for the wedding car that was a wifey road in this to the wedding so that was cool um, and as you can see and as I've said things have deteriorated. Wedding was a few years ago now, it's like 12, 13 years ago or something, so you know, hey, it's it's all good that paintwork doesn't quite last that long on a Bedford, they are renowned for rusting and that's basically what it's done, it's just flared up in a few places and you kind of just have to patch it up. So what we'll do today is stop talking, I'll roll it out from here, I'll put the jumper cables on it because there's no way it's going to start by itself. We'll see if it's got enough fuel to run it up to temp, and we're going to change the oil. I'm going to do that because I haven't changed the oil in ever. It's never had an oil change, um, so it could be 10 years old. We'll change the oil, make sure it's not all full of metal and crap, because otherwise I'm not putting fuel injection on an engine that's in a poor condition. That's just, that is dumb, and then we would look at doing something else with it. So, stop talking, let's roll it out and see what happens. Righty oh. Not gonna need the steering, so that's okay. It's in neutral. Look at that, it's moving already. It hasn't actually sat stationary for I don't know how long it's been parked here, but it hasn't sat stationary. We do roll it out, we do start it up every now and then. Um, it's not a heck of a lot of room for this sort of thing around here. Down. Right, at some point we'll need the keys so they can be there. Obviously, I brought those out here to get us going. Oh, I've moved it too far forward. I'm gonna scratch the paint a little bit. It's alright, I don't think anyone's gonna cry about that. Our vehicle needs a repump, uh, repaint. Dry sump pump. It's an interesting thing to be kicking around in a Bedford, isn't it? See that? Dry sump pump. That came off the Sylvia. That's actually for sale if anyone's looking for it. That'll be why the battery's flat. Right, well, that's, that's easy enough to resolve. If this one's got enough juice in it. Which we will soon find out. Now, I know that that one's a positive one. It should be labelled, yeah, but it's not. But I know it because that red wire's on there. Okay. Let's put this on the wrong way and blow everything up. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't have a don't need an excuse to replace all the electronics at that point. Okay. The chances of this starting... That's going to short out down there, isn't it? And then we'll have a fire. Chances of this starting first shot are about zero. Crikey. That'll do for what we're doing. Push the door too so we don't um, scratch up the paint. I think I've done it before. Right. Who 
We've got a little red light going in here somewhere for the alarm. No. Might not even be enough juice. Fuel pump's going. Sounds pretty aggressive like it's out of fuel though. I think it'll be out of fuel. Let's try it anyway. Oh, battery's a bit flat. Oh my god! That's acceptable, but hey, that's not genuine. I'm not kidding. That's been sitting here for months, and it actually did start. It could be out of fuel. Oh, that's all she wrote. That's all we've got in that battery. Oh, maybe not. Look at that. Righto, so all I want to do is get a bit of temperature in it. So I can change the oil. And get a um, reasonable oil change out of it, not leave too many dregs sitting in the motor. The noise you hear is the power steering pump is um, running a little bit dry because the rack has got a leak. So it leaks the fluid out of its system and there's no sense of me um, fixing that at the moment because this thing could still be sitting for 12 months will it idle let's see no so i'm gonna sit here and hold my foot on the throttle a little bit it did have an automatic choke system it's not working uh, this is one of the reasons why we are sick of the carburetor. It's just it needs tuning every five seconds and drinks way too much fuel. Not sure if this is moving yet. Probably not. We've got an idle yet. Hey, she's idling. There you go. Those of you who are old school V8 fans. So this was done recently. It's had a fiberglass section in here. And it cracked and started rusting. Oh look, you can see me, hey. So I've replaced all this with steel and then we've done this door here which opens up which I haven't finished yet and that's why it's taped up to try and seal it prevent water. God it stinks. Oof. Anyway. Bad. Seems to be running okay, all things considered. No noises. No oil light on. Not sure if that even works actually. Did that work? Let's turn the key off. The key back on. There's no oil light coming on. There's no oil light, there's no battery light. So neither of those things work like they should do. You could be halfway to wherever and all that could die and you wouldn't know until it just stops. We... Right, so there we are. We're up on the ramps. We've got bit of cardboard down here so we don't make a big mess on the ground if we spill any oil. Clean tray. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do under here, eh? Even things like this, the bloody sump's going rusty around the drain bung. Drain bung which has not moved in years. Oh, this will be 
This will be good. Oh, no. Here we go. Not seized, at least. Sump feels lukewarm. Oh, it's black. Are we surprised? No. Stings like fuel. Really, really stinks like fuel. And is runny as you would. That's straight petrol in there, but the smell of that. Okay, so I think the fuel pump's probably flogged itself to death. And it's dumping raw fuel into the sump, in which case this tray is very likely to overfill in a second. Or not. Okay. That's where we're at. So, looking at the state of our fuel pump there, hopefully you guys can see it. She got to come off, go away, don't like it. That's one thing that could be leading to a lot of fuel in there. The other thing is the tune and the condition of the rings and, uh, and the fact that it hasn't been driven anywhere, it's just sitting around. Starts and runs for short periods of time. All these things are not good. So we've got the oil drained out of it, it looked pretty disgusting, smelled even worse than it looked. Might be a little bit optimistic with 15W40, but um, this is only going to be in there short term anyway. This is... check the engine, it looks like it's okay, it wasn't full of metal and stuff, and considering how thin the oil was, it wasn't making any serious noises, so I'll make sure the oil pressure sensor is working, get that sussed out. We'll get this Aegis Oil 15W40 in there. And that will be okay short term at least until we've got it all sussed out and got the thing running again with our electronic fuel injection which forewarning it could take quite some time to get that all up and running it might be 12 months it might be three months it might be i don't know we'll see how it goes i've certainly got the um the please hurry up on this so that's that's priority today's a saturday so today's my day I'll get on with our little thing for a little bit and then we'll keep moving forward so let's get the oil in there see if we can make that oil pressure sender work that's probably going to take all day being a Bedford they are an epic P-I-T-A alright brand new oil filter here's the old one it's been on there for a while eh boys so we'll get this one on there Oh, I don't need to lube the seal. There's enough oil on that place already. Just that on there like that. Boom. You can pre-fill them with oil if you feel like it. Don't feel like it today. That's that. I could clean that oil off. I did bring a can down here to do that. She's a bit messy though. Let's do that. This is on special at Repco at the moment. It's cheap. We've got six cans. It's cheap. Oh look, works okay. That looks like magic. Like brand new. So that'll do. Time for some lunch, and then we'll see about that oil pressure sender why it is not working. Right, so fresh oil and filters in there. I ran it up for a bit and I mentioned about the fuel pump possibly leaking and putting fuel into the oil. Wish you guys could smell that oil. Jesus. Anyway, uh, just with a couple of minutes out here on that patch on the ground there, that is basically fuel and oil mixture. So the old beastie's dumping fuel oil mix out of the fuel pump physically onto the ground so that's yeah so what who knows how old that pump is it's failed what you do so I need to um, light might be terrible for you guys that way it's probably better that way so I need to get rid of the fuel pump basically so undo the two bolts and the fuel hoses take that pump off make a blanking plate stick that on there and get rid of that it's got an electric pump on there anyway it's probably still actually going to be mobile without the mechanical pump 
so I can have a cold drink and do that this afternoon. And down there, you might be able to see it if you know what you're looking for. It's fuel pumps, there's two bolts onto the, or two studs, sorry, onto the engine front cover. It's not on a block, it's on the front cover of some description. And just one hose in, one hose out. So we'll undo all that, blank it off, bypass the pump with the hose, done. Shouldn't be too easy, uh, too hard. Although, this is a Bedford and they can be a pain in the brain, so this is probably going to turn into a full afternoon. Yeah, I'm lying down on the job again. So anyway, uh, that's the spot where the fuel pump lived there. Right there. She gone, stacking off. That's the fuel pump there. So basically this lever gets pushed, operates a diaphragm inside that and shifts fuel front to rear of the car. Now, I'm not claiming to be a Holden 253 expert or diaphragm pump expert, but when you see what we're seeing just right here, it's not a good sign. And when the oil and fuel falls out of it like that, I think it's safe to say that that's car put. It's not in a good way. And it's time for that to be leaving the vehicle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make, as I said before, I'm going to make a plate to cover that cavity there up, seal off the crankcase again, and then we'll just run, I think it's tucked up here somewhere, the fuel hose, we'll just run that straight up to the other one, the electric pump will take care of the rest. Old beastie purring away there. It's actually up to tent now. According to the gauge, according to my fingerometer, no leaks down there where we've taken the fuel pump out. Seems to be running all right. Sometimes you get an issue with not running properly because of the pulsing of fuel pressure bumping the needle valve off the seat, making them run a little bit richer. But it actually seems to be okay. RPM or something like that and a little bit of temp on the temp gauge there so at least that works it is charging despite there being no light on the dash sounds like it's running all right there's no bad noises or anything probably needs another oil change to get rid of the rest of the fuel that'll be in the oil system but for today that will do. So that's part one. There's going to be about 10 million parts on this. There is a lot of work to do and like I say I'm not sure how long that will take but I'll get on with it.